You are watching an instant lunch production. To properly enjoy this video, please eat some ramen noodles as you watch. Welcome viewers. Here displayed is a very nice reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from sometime in the 1960s, probably the mid-1960s. <clears throat> anyway, this particular tape recorder is a very interesting model because it just has a certain style to it that's a little bit different from a lot of portable reel-to-reels I've seen. Not too different, but just a little bit different. It's the Sony TC802. 802. So notice that the door here is um, attached. Of course, you could unscrew screws to remove it, but it's attached. And has a pretty neat arrangement with the speaker up here above the reels and then of course vents on the door where the, where the sound could go through with the door closed. And it has a pretty nice looking uh, layout to it. So now of course we want to put the reels on and for us to do that we need to use a very special kind of technology. Basically a form of teleportation which we will employ here. This is technology that is not normally seen, except for in science fiction films, but we're about to use it right here. So let's initiate teleportation sequence. Teleportation sequence complete. The reels are now loaded onto the machine, so um, we can do some operation now with this recorder. I'm going to show um, some things. Now, unfortunately, this recorder um, has a problem where the motor does not like to start up very easily when there is um like whenever it's not so easy to turn because the idler is pressing up against it so sometimes I have to start like that let go of play a little bit and the motor turns and then push it again sometimes it takes a few tries and there there it goes has no problem though going into rewind and fast forward. Let's go ahead and set the counter. Right now we're set to three three fourths. So let's let's go set it to one and seven eighths. We're going to start at one and seven eighths now. This machine's speed switch is a metric only: four point seven five centimeters per second and nine point five centimeters per second, which is very interesting. This recorder originally came with a Sony F96 microphone. Now you've seen this model microphone used in numerous videos in the past. It's one of my favorite mics of, that I have. It's just it's very robust, solid, and just very reliable, very good quality. So I th and here's the one I already had, and this is the one that was with the recorder. And at first I thought they'd be identical. The one that came with the recorder has a gray plug, and the one that I already had has a red plug. I have a, another one that has a black plug. But here's the interesting thing. Now this one has been so well used that it's completely rubbed off on both. But this used to say impedance low. This one that came with the recorder says impedance high. One of these F96s is higher impedance than the other. I measured this one to be about 500 ohms impedance. And this low impedance one I measured to be about 200 ohms impedance. Well, more technically, DC resistance I was measuring. So not actual impedance. But it's probably around there. So that was interesting to notice that the, uh, the original mic for this one was actually little higher impedance version of the F96 than the other F96 I had. So we're going to make a recording with both microphones and we're going to see if there's any difference between the impedances of the two mics. I'll show a recording and then of course I'll edit things so that you don't see the entire recording being done just hearing the entire playback instead. So this has an interlock here so you can't push record unless you hold down the R 
It also has a, a mechanical pause, which is a nice feature. Do the mechanical pause, put it in record, coax the motor. Motor's now spinning. I'm probably blocking everything with my arm. Hello, it's too loud. Hello, hello, okay. I'm now making a recording at 4.75 centimeters per second on a Sony TC802 reel to reel tape recorder. Uh, you probably can't even see the VU meter mm, fluctuate. We're going to, oh wow, it's blurry, of course. Zoom in a bit here. You can, among with some, with a long glare, hopefully you can see that blurry meter fluctuate. <laughs> gee whiz. And, um, oh, gee whiz. Anyway, let's pause the camera. Now that we've made our recording, we can go ahead and rewind. Give it a little bit of help there. There it goes. Maybe the idler might could use some cleaning. So I had opened this up earlier, suspecting the possibility of leaky capacitors and wanting to see what was going on with the motor, and looked at the circuit board and checked the capacitors of the ESR meter, but the capacitors all seem to test as being good or at least okay. The amplifier on this does not play as loud as I would like, but I looked on the specs and it mentioned it only being 250 milliwatts whereas a lot of other recorders I've seen similar to this you know other 5 inch recorders and such tended to have amplifiers that were more along the lines of being 1 watt or at least close to 1 watt so that would probably explain why this one's considerably quieter at 4.75 centimeters per second on the Sony TC802 reel to reel tape recorder. Uh, you probably can't even see the VU meter fluctuate. We're going to, oh wow, it's blurry, of course. Zoom in a bit here. You can, among with some, with a long glare, hopefully you can see that blurry meter fluctuate. <laughs> Gee whiz. And, um, Oh, gee whiz. Anyway, let's pause the camera. So, well, more pre precisely, instead of pausing the camera, we're actually stopping that current file, and then we'll be recreating a new file, because instead of one file that's made from the camera that has a continuous pausing and going, it's every time you start to stop it, it creates a new file. But, um, so yes, I'm recording on this unit. The volume is currently set to 4. I'm speaking about three, four inches away from the mic. I'm speaking at arm's length distance now. The level has been put all the way up. And of course, this is at the slow speed of one and seven eighths inches per second. Now, we're going to compare this microphone to the other Sony F96. So right now we're using the high impedance version of the F96 with the level set at five. Uh, shout out to this guy, Fritz. And... Now we'll, sh we'll switch to the other microphone. Okay, with the same recording level, we're using the other microphone. And I've noticed something quite different. The strength of the recording level is considerably less. This recorder is designed to use a higher impedance microphone on the input. The low impedance F96 is not nearly as sensitive as the high impedance version. Now we're running again with a high impedance version and the level is a lot more strong. Now we're going to switch the speed to 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. One thing I really like about this unit is that it does not employ the use of capstan sleeves, but instead you can slip switch the speed with a switch. Also one thing I enjoy about it is the fact that the speed switch actually changes the equalization for the speeds. To attain better sound quality than you generally get from a lot of portable reel to reels where they didn't bother to change the equalization when you change the speed. I'll switch them and make the level just a little bit higher. Okay, so anyhow, that's overdriving some. So now, um, anyway, another interesting thing with this machine is the speed selector 
mechanism. It's not just electrically changing the motor speed as I, was, I would have assumed when I saw the pictures of this machine on eBay. But instead, it actually mechanically moves a um, idler wheel from two different diameters on the uh, motor shaft. And actually, since the diameter is continue as a, a section where it changes from one diameter to another, you can actually not only do the regular one and seven eighths, three and three fourths, but you can also actually kind of move the switch in between those two speeds and get speeds that are kind of in between those two, which is an interesting side effect of the design, which could be useful for playing back rim drive recorded tapes. Now, um, some more things I want to uh, mention about this recorder. So, of course, this machine will run on batteries or AC. I'm running it on AC right now to make this recording, but it also uses, I think, six D-size cells. And um, currently my D-size cells are employed in other tape recorders. And also, I'm pleased to say that, of course, you probably already figured it's AC bias. It is AC bias and permanent magnet erase. That's right. It uses a, a term, turning permanent magnet that when you put it in record position, it turns to expose the magnet to the tape. Um, the bias frequency is about 40 kilohertz as per the instruction manual, which actually has the schematic and the specifications. The frequency response for three and three fourths inches per second is 90 to 9500 hertz and the frequency response at one and seven eighths is 90 to 5000 hertz okay so anyway another thing i'm very curious about this recorder okay well, i want to mention about it this is an international voltage machine so it will it has a switch for 110 and 220. Now on the manual of course it specifies in the 110 setting you have a voltage range of 100 volts to 120 volts and on the 220 setting it has a voltage range of 200 volts to 240. So the neat thing about that is that this machine was designed with voltages in mind that it could be used in Japan and when I saw this recorder uh, some things kind of struck out to me to make me think that it might not be a model that was sold in the United States or at least was common in the United States because typically on vintage Sony recorders you will see on the badge on the back where it has the model number and the serial number and all that stuff it will include not only it being made by Sony but also being distributed by Superscope but this recorder of course only mentions Sony Corporation Tokyo Japan they do not have any mentioning of Superscope another thing is is whenever I went is, is the fact that the speed switch only shows 9.5 and 4.75 or is it 25 let me let's switch the speed 4.75 okay but they don't say the the uh, imperial speeds on the recorder they do mention the imperial speeds in parentheses in the manual with the metric mentioned first but of course only the metric is shown on the recorder itself so that's another curiosity another another thing also is um, also, even on the inside, amongst various recorders that I've worked on by Sony, this one's design seems rather odd. The circuit board actually has plugs on it that you can plug in, which is very nice. And um, it's a lot easier to service than some of the other Sony machines I've come across. And the motor is very interesting because it's a long, elongated motor with a shaft on each end. One driving an idler for the capstan flywheel, and the other one driving an idler for rewinding. I believe fast forward is belt driven off of the flywheel, although I haven't looked at the mechanics on the other side. But anyway, the interesting things of this recorder lead me, or various things about it, like the voltage and the speed only being in metric, and it just seeming like 
a more unusual model is making me think that it was a machine that was possibly only or at least more sold in Japan. I don't know if it was only sold in Japan, but I'm curious. Another thing, though, that really makes me think it is when I searched this recorder online, although I found the eBay listing that I got this on, I didn't find too much else in my searching except I found a couple of websites, Japanese websites, that showed this recorder. One was of a Japanese tape recorder collector. Various different, mainly real, uh, stereo reel-to-reel -reel decks were shown, including this particular machine. Another site was some design art type site, which was showing various different vintage magazines and stuff like that, and one of them mentioned this recorder as being an example of uh, Japanese quality construction, something along those lines. So anyway, it was interesting to note those things because both sites I found this, recorders, this recorder on, aside from eBay, were Japanese websites. And by Japanese websites, I mean like everything's in Japanese. It's not like a Japanese guy put up a website that had English text on it. No, it was like a Japanese website. I had to put it in Google Translate. So that was very interesting to notice with this recorder, which is making me think even more so. This might have been a Japan model. Anyway, let's get back to showing things on the video, although I may also have shown those things while it was being played back. You may have also noticed that the, uh, the uh, button for the recording, you only have to press record down as opposed to pressing record and play down at the same time, which is very nice. I've seen a few Sony cassette recorders that are like that. I've always liked it when they do it like that. Nice forward. Rewind. You hear the audio for a moment as the main capacitor dissipates its charge. I have also recorded some music onto this machine and at both the speeds and will demonstrate how it plays back. The music is performed by Survive, not by me. It's queued up and ready to go. Fantastic music. 
to say the least. Testing with the original Sony mic. Testing one, two, three. With the original F96 microphone. A second on the Sony TC. Anyway, it's a very excellent recorder. Also, if you're wondering, these two clips here are so you can clip the bundled up AC cord. Very interesting machine. I will put onto this video some footage I made of the inside of this tape recorder. Although an interesting thing to note, to take the bottom off, you don't even need a screwdriver. You can simply turn the rubber feet, which are attached to screws. That's how one would go about changing the fuses if they get blown. Or lubricating rollers on the inside or if they need better access to the voltage selector switch, all which are described in the manual, whereas most things you find say no user serviceable parts inside, refer all service to qualified service personnel. It's not how it is with this recorder. That's right, and that's the way I like it. I got this Sony tape recorder opened up because I'm going to have to probe around for any questionable capacitors with my homemade ESR meter. And I just thought I'd want to show some of the inside because this is a very interesting recorder. I've worked on a number of Sony tape recorders in the past, cassette tape recorders, reel to reels, and um, um, of course I haven't worked on tons and tons and tons, but I worked on a few Sony machines, a number. And I don't think I recall seeing styles quite like in this one. That is, all the wires are on one side of the board and it's easy to get to the other side of the board. And all the wires are actually plugged in to the side so you can actually easily disconnect it to service it. And I'm also very pleased with the uh, transistors just to see there are all these, this case style painted black too. They look really nice. Really nice looking transistors. I really like the look of the transistors in this unit. It's quite something. Also notice none of the transistors are heat sinked. But I'm guessing because of their larger metal cans there was less of a need to heat sink them. But of course I'm going to be going in and uh, checking these capacitors to see if I find any leaky ones. Also interesting to notice is these resistors that are common in vintage Japanese electronics. This style of resistor is very interesting. They're, uh, they have radio leads and they're gray but still have the color code but they just have a very unique look to them. And look at that transistor. Look at those transistors on that. It's just beautiful. And of course there's the bias oscillator coil. Thank you very much. Genuine Sony coil. Those are all genuine Sony parts. And of course the trimmers and so forth. This is a very neat recorder. Hoping to get this machine uh, fully operating correctly. And then here's the motor. What's also interesting is this recorder does not use any belt drive. It is an idler drive machine. Notice here you can see the flywheel underneath. The capstan flywheel. A sideways idler and then the motor drive and the speed selection is by choosing different diameter when it's turning this thing will move um, different diameter on the sp spindle and then the other side of the motor goes to another wheel down there for rewinding and then fast forward I think it's through a uh, belt there's another coil right here, and then there's a big electrolytic capacitor. This capacitor tested as being good, and this capacitor, believe it or not, tested as being good, although I might still replace it, I'm not so sure. The motor wasn't wanting to start reliably on its own in playback mode, although it would have no problem starting when I'm going to fast forward and rewind. 